we seem to be asking for too much with that because no, no, no. just as you said, our politics is crude, local. Economy is a lot more sophisticated. sophisticated. How do we travel that road? No, but you see, we've moved from elections. We had military coups. We had military strongmen. We have elections, you know, and we're now moving to... So dictatorial tendencies are no longer being tolerated. Okay. So that's the whole thing. One, once you have an open, open government, and we have an open economy, then the rest, as I say, is history. You know, each government, whenever they come in, they always say that, look, we're putting in place policies, both in terms of the monetary and the fiscal yeah. one. We're working on infrastructure to ensure that the people get what they deserve mm -hmm. and improve lifestyle. But usually you always have people who disagree with some of those. But from what you've seen, the policies that they put in place, they talk about different programs, either the anchor boroughs or whichever one. The yeah. ones you've seen, how do you think that that has impacted on the lives of the average Nigerian? Because, I mean, you get to hear people say, look, unemployment or unemployment figures, they all reflect on things. What have you seen? Okay, see. There's nominal, what we call nominal uh, analysis, and then there's directional analysis. Nominally, the things are moving very slowly. Directionally, they are positive impact is minimal. Okay, so trader money or you know, these programs. To a large extent, symbolic. But what is important is the trend. And if you amplify this, it's interesting. We said capex and recurrent expenditure, 70-30. And we did two point something trillion naira worth of capex. Fantastic compared to the past. But in terms of optimality, it's nothing. We've got to be audacious. You have one trillion naira of power sector debt. Our view is that right off that debt, right? Investments will come into the power sector and you'll have transformational results. So there are things, what, what, what the government is doing is laying the foundation. But you, you can't spend the whole, the whole of our life laying the foundation there. You've got to put up the building. So the foundations have been laid. No matter the outcome of this election, the challenges of the Nigerian economy will remain there. And the foundation that I'm laid, you, can, you, you have to build on it. We are in a situation where we are talking about it, at least talking about it, diagnosing it is 50% of the solution. And then implementing what we have to do. What is happening in this country today and, this, and the beauty of this campaign is that you are seeing a massive demand for good governance. And when the demand for good governance increases, the supply of good governance and the beneficiary of supply of good governance are the people. So we have the benefit of having this conversation. 20 years ago, as soon as we finished the conversation, we will all be carried away and locked up, right, and maybe assassinated. But today, we are talking about it openly. President, ministers, governors are all listening. And they are taking notes and they are reacting. So and they, and that's the beauty of it all. Um, you, you, you talked about um, well, we've, you talked about that domestic uh, uh, portfolio of uh, investments the other time. Um, we have been made to believe that significant portion of any economy is in the small and medium Scale enterprises. Yes. The climate, however, doesn't seem very robust for encouraging that sector of our economy. No, that's not right. Look. The central bank before used to say we have allocated $200 million. Today, when they do it, they have special allocation for MSMEs. They have the allocation for BDCs. They have the, alloc the word allocation is a misnomer. We don't do that. You don't use that in the market economy. But in any case, what we are seeing today is that the availability of supply is there at a higher price. But the, the challenge is access, not just availability. Now, many... People, we just hear in pockets that the, these monies are there, but the access to them... No, they are there. The truth is they are there. If you go to your bank and you want to buy your PTA today, two years ago, oh, I have to know the bank manager. I have to. Now, I can buy my PTA at Travelex at the airport, even 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and, and catch my flight. The, some of this talk is cheap. People say all sorts of things. But the reality is to test it. Okay. Right? 
Okay. If you look at the commodity prices, <clears throat> this is the one that uh, uh, will get a lot of people's attention, the basics here. Yes. Uh, let's go through some of this. You, you've highlighted some of this figure, yes. but I see some in red. Yes. How much of concern? The, the red be? is what it was in 2014 uh -huh. and what it is in 2018. In 2014, what was the price of, of the five commodities there? You find that um, three are positive. Yeah. Right? Palm oil. Palm oil. Gary. Uh, palm oil positive, which is important. Gary, very, very important. And Gary has gone from, it was 13,500 in 2014. It's now 6,500. Right? And that means cassava down. Rice went up went from 10,000 to 24,000 in 2016. It's down to 16,000 now. Mm. In fact, it was 15,000 last month. Beans is quite interesting. It was 14,000. It went all the way to 22,000. It's now 26,000 at times. And tomatoes. When you see a high commodity price, it means the people who are supplying it are making more money. The farmers are making more money. You had yesterday, they want to ban the importation of tomato paste. Right? Idea. Because tomato... The tomato business, even Dangote, uh, Boa, and all these guys are investing in the tomatoes business. So you have, there's a massive investment taking place in agriculture. Talking about the state of the oil economy, because if we look at the 2018 index under the pipeline closures, if that slowed compared to all the others in 2014 where you had increased pricing, production, the recount, shouldn't this slowing of the pipeline closures amount to a lot more performance in terms of yes. the revenue? The only reason why your economy is performing is because the oil sector is not disrupted. The vice president went to the Niger Delta six times, resolved yeah. everything within. You don't hear of militants, you don't hear of force majeure. For Cardos and Escravos pipeline are functioning perfectly. That's why you have an economy. That's why you we can be told. If not, we would have not had a luxury. We would, would, have, been, we would have been done. We're doomed if we, if we don't do anything about the oil economy. So the fact that those people have been engaged, the fact that you've reduced the disruption means that you now have some stability at the bottom of the revenue profile. Why that is good, isn't, aren't, you, don't you, aren't you concerned that Nigeria is too dependent on oil? oil? Yes. Well, that's the reality. But In terms of activity, our activities are well diversified now. You have the service sector, you have agri and all that. But in terms of value, a barrel of oil is $71, right, or 60, $62 a barrel. Huh? And a bar water or gari and all of that. But the agriculture employs a lot of people, but oil is a driver. It gives us fiscal revenue, it gives us export revenue, and gives us foreign exchange, which allows us to drive the economy. Now, having said that, the path to diversification and actually liberation of the economy from the oil curse is a long-term issue. And you have to, got to, people talk about it, but if you, if you have to measure the impact, the economic impact of diversification is not being felt that much now. We can do much more. What should, what should we be doing? No, I, I come back to the same thing. Pricing factors at equilibrium, so that investments come in. Investments are what drive everything. You, in, when investments increase by a factor of 100, you have what we call the investment multiplier. That investment multiplier gives a quantum leap to the amount on income. And that income, when shared amongst people, is what you call the income per capita and the standard of mm -hmm. living. So you've got to get investments. Investments will come when three of us here now decide that, OK, we have confidence in this government and government in the confidence in the environment, and we put our money in. As long as confidence is weak, as long as there's a deficit of trust, then we will be very, very tentative in our investment decisions. We will not make what we call the FID, the final investment decision. We're going to do it. No wonder there's a capital, there's a coward. It flees when it's threatened. Well, <laughs> that's how far we can go today. Uh, Mr. Biswak Rimani, economist and CEO of Financial Derivatives. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, gentlemen.